So you recently wrote Letter to the American Church. I released a podcast a while back, or I guess it was just a monologue, uh, which was Message to Christians. And uh, so obviously, to some degree, we're thinking along parallel lines. Why did you think it was necessary to write a letter to the American church? What did you mean by the American church? And uh, tell us about the letter and what the consequences of writing that was. That was 2022 that was released, right? Yes. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm large. Uh, I contain multitudes. You know who said that? I believe it was Chris Christie. Just kidding. Uh, I, I, I'm very, very eclectic. Funny. I'm very eclectic. And I have to tell you that um, some people know me principally as a writer because I've written whatever, 14 plus books, many children's books. Uh, I do, of course, um, radio show, TV show, and so on and so forth. But almost everything that I do, I do for everyone. In other words, I'm trying to reach uh, a broad audience, not just I want to sell more books, but because I, I feel God created me to speak to a popular audience, to a, to a wide audience. This most recent book, which is my shortest book, Letter to the American Church, um, is the first time I have ever written something specifically only for those who claim to be Christians. I thought to myself, well, I shouldn't say I thought to myself. I've, I, had a, I had a number of thoughts rambling around in my head that became increasingly highlighted uh, in a way that I couldn't, uh, I don't know how some people will take this, but, but I, I've never felt God called me to write something the way he did this book. In retrospect, all of my books, Bonhoeffer and so on and so forth, it's, it's, it's exceedingly clear to me that God's hand was in my writing them. But never have I felt a burning passion that I knew was God calling me to write this specific book. So it, it's a strange and unique thing in my experience. There's a, uh, you know, if you think of, of, of the title Letter to the American Church, it would be natural to think, what kind of hubris are we talking about here that somebody would dare uh, to write a letter to the American church as though he's some modern day Paul or something like that? But on the contrary, because I felt it was God wanting to say this, uh, I had more humility than ever in writing it, thinking that I cannot get this wrong. I have to really be sure to take myself out of the way as much as possible to, to, to let God say what he wants to to say. And I don't mean this in any mystical sense, but I was very um, sober-minded to write something with a title letter to the American church. And the reason I wrote it in a nutshell is that um, in 2010, I came out with a, my, my longest book, a, a biography of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the German pastor who was involved in the plot to kill Hitler. Um, I knew when I was writing that book, uh, that it it sort of i could i could smell what was happening as i was writing that book i could smell that in our future in the west not just in america but in america specifically and in with the events of the last few years uh let's say the last 3 years um it was impossible for me to avoid the thought that just as the silence of the church in Germany opened the door to hell on earth, which we now know because we know what happened. And of course, I document it in my Bonhoeffer book and in this new book, Letter to the American Church. But, I, but, but the thesis of this book, Letter to the American Church, is that precisely as the German church was silent and precisely as that opened the door to hell, to every kind of evil, it is the silence of the church in America now, this minute, that is similarly opening the door to hellish uh, things on a number of fronts. The, the parallels are so marked. Even the parallel of the excuses given by uh, theologians and Christians in the 30s who said, we don't want to speak out against Hitler. We don't want to, these are our reasons. Dramatically similar parallels 
among many uh, evangelicals and others in the American church today for why they are being silent on issues that they ought to be screaming about, issues that you and others have shouted about, the evil of the transgender uh, lunacy, and on and on and on and on. So I, I said to myself, I can't believe it, but the parallels are, are so dramatic uh, to the silence of the church in Germany that I am just burning to, to speak this, hoping and praying that God in his grace would use it to wake up those who might be awakened. We know that some people will insist on sleepwalking uh, to the abyss, they're, they, they cannot be reached. But I know that in Germany in the 30s, there were many good pastors who got this wrong. Many good pastors who were fooled, um, deceived, uh, who allowed themselves to be deceived until it was too late. Many of them woke up and then it was too late to do anything. So I wrote this book hoping to reach those specifically who call themselves Christians, who dare to call themselves Christians, uh, with the idea that they would say, yes, I have been complicit in my silence, in my inaction. Uh, these excuses are not biblically based. I must speak out.